They look so much like siblings. I done goofed. Ah, it's so good. I can't believe that I let myself include this shot. Don't do this. Just, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say right now, don't do this. <sighs> oh, hello, and welcome back to this little series where I rewatch a bunch of my old films and talk about things that went well, things that didn't go well, things that I really should have got right the first time. Somewhat ironically, I am in fact reshooting this video because my first attempt was all entirely out of focus. The reason why this is incredibly ironic shall soon become apparent to you. Ignore the fact that I'm in my dressing gown, it's just, it's just suddenly gotten cold and I, I don't like it. So today I'm looking at Invite, which was a one location short film thing that was basically just one scene that I shot with a bunch of local film students. In a lot of ways this is my most ambitious film, even though it's all, you know, one location and all that jazz, because we were shooting with a big proper crew, nice fancy camera, it was in a location that wasn't just my house. So I wanted this one to do pretty well, and I figured uh, it would be one of the best things I'd made. Looking back on it, this is not the case. <laughs> so straight from the off you can see that the grade is not very good. There's various reasons for this, most of them being I'm just not very good at grading. But probably the big thing was that I could have done this well if I'd given myself more time. During the first half of this year I had this schedule that I was trying to keep to of getting one short film out every six weeks. I managed to keep to that schedule for five whole films, which is great because I was planning on trying to get five short films to a thousand views this year, so managing to keep that going for five short films. But this was the last of those and I'd sort of used up all of the, the buffer time that I'd generated for myself, um, meaning that post-production of this was very, very rushed. And so therefore the grading suffered. Another problem that was a result of this lack of time was I couldn't go and physically get the files, so they had to export them all out at a slightly lower level of quality and then send them over to me so I could edit in time to get this out. So ultimately, as you can imagine, this means that it doesn't look as good as it possibly could have done. Anyways, let's move on from how it looks to how it sounds. Hey man. How have you been? So, it does not sound good. This is mostly due to technological things going wrong, uh, but partly it's my fault as well. Yay! So a couple of hours into the first day of shooting, the sound people come up to me and say, we've got some weird stuff going on with the sound. We thought it might just be our headphones, so we didn't say anything. We've been kind of tinkering um, between takes, and yeah, it's definitely 100% not the headphones and it's stuff that's being recorded into the sound. We've got this weird hiss noise thing that's going on. You'll probably be able to take it out in post, but you might lose some sound quality whilst doing that. What we would like to do is replace all of our sound equipment, uh, which will take a good two hours. If we do that, the hiss will go. You won't have to deal with any more of that problem, but all the stuff that we've shot so far, the sound is not going to be usable on it. So me being me, I thought it sounds not going to be that bad and it would be good to just get the consistent sound across the entire film. So I, I can't afford to lose those two hours. I'm just going to roll with it. I'm just going to see what happens and hope that all the sound is good enough at the end. Don't do this. Just, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say right now, don't do this. That is dumb. Fix the problem, take the hit of losing a bit of time, and then just simplify your shot list. Because my shot list did not need to be as complicated as it was to make this work. Like, if you've got a couple of decent performances, and these performances are really good, if you've got that, and you've got a halfway decent script, and I think I did a pretty decent job this time, you got those, you've got a film. You don't need all of the setups that I planned, 
and that I was too attached to to be willing to cut setups to to get working sound equipment. I done goofed. I done goofed bigly. Let's just talk very quickly though about how how good the casting was for our two leads. Um, Danny is a friend of mine, an actor friend of mine, um, and Bear we found through a casting website. And they look so much like siblings. I didn't realise just how much like siblings they looked until I got them in the room together on the day. Ah, it's so good. Not only do they look like siblings, but they manage to act like it as well. Like you get this kind of thing and they're both so childish. Ah, oh, it's really good. Even though they're they're having these adult problems, you can see the the sort of childish tensions bubbling to the surface. It's it's great. I love it. There are some bits that didn't work in the script, but I think for the most part, anything that didn't work, I cut. At least when it came to dialogue. That's true. It's not true when it came to shots that are out of focus. Because there's one setup where the majority of it is out of focus and I decided to just keep it. Because again, I was so attached to this, to these ideas that I had of how it should look that I wasn't, like when things didn't work, when, when shots were out of focus, which this one specific shot really, really was completely out of focus, when that happened, I was, I was just not willing to cut it. Because like, oh, it's only a bit out of focus. It doesn't ruin the film completely. I saw it this way and so it has to be this way. No, audiences are not that forgiving of just stuff being out of focus. So if it is out of focus, reshoot it like I'm doing right now. Or just cut it out and don't upload it to your YouTube channel. I can't believe that I let myself include this shot. I know I've just been, I know I've just been like ragging on it the whole time, but I really do like the script and I really do like the performances. I stand by that and I stand by the crew because the crew was such a joy to work with. Um, even when things went wrong, they were professionals about it. Um, and they encouraged me to make the right decision, which I didn't always do. So yeah, I think that's probably about all I've got to say about this one. If you enjoyed this video, there's a whole four other ones of them where I talk about other films that I've made and things that went wrong, things that went well, um, things I learnt, and things that you too might be able to learn. They're a good time, feel free to check them out. Uh, Feel free to look at any of the films that I made. Feel free to look at any of the videos that I've made that are kind of video essay style, talking about filmmakers and filmmaking stuff. Um, yeah. Watch my things, yay!